Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Gin Centre. The Gin Centre will be a gathering place for past, present, and future members of our community. And, of course, it's the home ground of the mighty Fraser Flames. There is, there is no facility like it in our region. For a generation, FCAC families have dreamed of this space. But did they ever dream it like this? In the early 1990s, the Anglican Schools Commission decided they wanted a presence here on Queensland's beautiful Fraser Coast. Some rubbished the idea. They said we wouldn't make it. Well, here we are. As a key player and driver in the region's education, cultural and sporting communities. Even more so now with this outstanding facility. Building a school from the ground up is a weighty responsibility. Whoever takes on this role will imbue the community with their vision, their ideas and their philosophy. They will shape the space for future generations, creating traditions and culture that will become part of the school's DNA for all of those that follow. The first principle can make or break a new school. Who would have that privilege? They needed someone with vision, passion, and drive. You need a leader that can bring a dream into reality. And they needed Graham Ginn. Building FCAC was not merely a job for Mr. Ginn. It was his vocation, his great work, his legacy. He built this college with his heart as much as his hands and his head. Spend a bit of time at FCAC and you will note that there is a strong influence from Greek mythology. And I am most grateful, Mr Ginn, that you decided our houses be named after heroes from ancient Greece rather than something boring like politicians or, or bishops. Archbishop, you're very interesting, Archbishop Jeremy. Take a walk outside when you get a chance into our plaza and you'll see how well those ancient stories link to our values and the lessons we can learn from each. Our student council recently approved a change in our sporting team logo. The mighty Fraser Flames are now represented by the mythical phoenix that we just saw, which symbolizes our unbeatable spirit. Ancient Greece was also the birthplace of some of the greatest philosophers in human history. And there is one famous ancient Greek proverb that I feel encapsulates Mr. Ginn's time here as principal of FCAC. Listen carefully. A society grows great when wise men plant trees whose shade they 
they will never sit in. And that's exactly what you've done here, Graham. And some of you have heard me say, FCAC is for the dreamers. Well, Mr. Ginn was our first dreamer. For 10 years, he went the extra mile in body, mind, and spirit to bring a vision into reality. He was chasing a dream. A dream not of a good school, but a great school. And now we live in his dream. We sit in the shade of the trees that he planted. His vision is the sunlight that we grow towards. Therefore, it is fitting that this visionary facility at the center of this great Anglican school on the Fraser Coast bear the name of the family that brought our college into being. For who are we without you? Please welcome to the stage, not the myth, but the man himself, Mr. Graham Ginn. I'm not sure I can follow any of that. <laughs> Jeff, that was a, a wonderful background talk. You haven't lost it, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you still got it. Joe, <sighs> those words, I'm not sure who they were for, but uh, uh, I appreciate them, but goodness, uh, it's welled up an emotion in me which is pretty hard to deal with. So thank you, thank you very much. Great speech, Joe. Well done. Um, and I'm so happy that Joe is the continuing principal of this uh, lovely college. I have prepared a little talk to go with this, and I'll deal with that now. Firstly, I will say to my wife, Catherine, because she and our children, Cameron and Claire, who are with us, uh, without their support, I wouldn't have done any of this at all. To Principal Joe, to the distinguished guests who have been identified, ladies, gentlemen, and you students who have been led here to endure a speech from me, good morning. It's an absolute pleasure to be back at Fraser Coast Anglican College at the opening <clears throat> of a former undercover space, now transform transformed into a multi-purpose centre, named after yours truly although I did rather like the name Casuarina. It's a rather nice tree that I rather enjoy. A word that means much to me these days is bittersweet. As humans, and please note all students here, we can be both sad and happy at the same time. As humans, I am, as a human, I am so happy to be here with Catherine but sad that it is quite possibly the last time I will be here. This building was initiated in 2004 as the last of many construction requests for Fraser Coast Anglican College. 
it is wonderful to see it as an evolved and completed facility, far better than I imagined it back then. It is, I guess, rather like a Swiss army knife, just bigger and without all the extra sharp bits. But seriously, it's a testament to the dedication of the current principal, Joe, perhaps wearing architects, the financial supporters, the staff, the students, and probably a number of custodians who never get enough credit. To everyone who made this possible, thank you. Joe asked me to mention some major aspects of my vision for this college. That's a tough call, Joe, for there are many, so many, but in a moment, three of them, two of which are quite personal and contain the essential elements of life, that is, the bittersweetness. I gestated that vision for this school over six months from July 1994, and earlier, to be honest, to December, nearly 30 years ago, before the opening of the college and well before any of you students were born and probably well before a number of the staff here. From later 1994 and over the next 10 years, I worked with a wonderful team who helped build that vision into reality and rounded it in their own ways. I know that Catherine's and my children gained immeasurably from their efforts. The first driving aspect, Joe, by 1994, I had spent half a time, uh, uh, half a lifetime, either being a student or being an educator. As a child of parents serving in the military, I attended 14 schools, 13 of which were primary schools, in several countries and most states of Australia. At some of those students, you might be sad to hear, I was bullied horribly and unmercifully, largely and simply due to me being from a different place and having a different accent. In later life, some of the schools at which I was employed, several quite grand and posh in appearance, demonstrated aspects of a student and especially staff behaviour and morals that I never wished to see. So from some things that were quite bitter, some sweetness can emerge. I wanted FCAC to be a safe, calm, largely egalitarian, and non-exclusive environment that was open and accessible to the world and enabled its students to expand their horizons. My second driving aspect. Some of the schools and universities I attended enabled me to experience a very wide range of activities. They encouraged me to be adventurous and be something of a risk taker. People who know me quite well probably think that I take too many risks, but that's by the by. Indeed, bringing my family to a seaside town to start up an independent school where there had been none was a huge risk to us all. In my life before FCAC, I uh, enjoyed learning the physical and mathematical sciences at both undergraduate and postgrad level. I engaged in military service, I led a, an expedition of young army officers across the Kokoda track. I played representative cricket and tennis, raced motor cars. In fact, one of the motor cars is the name of one of the houses here. Uh, made and sold pottery, restored old furniture, gained a black belt in karate, and from the early 1970s brought information technology into the schools at which I worked. Now that was, you know, in the life leading up to when I was at FCAC. More has happened since. So I wanted all students at FCAC to be impelled into a wide range of experiences and challenges, that they might enjoy a life that is fulfilled by engaging in their preferred choice of such experiences and to be not afraid to have a go. Within reason, being a risk taker is a good thing. As humans, there are many things we are afraid to do, and to be honest, are bitterly difficult at the time. But having done so, we are proud of that sweet achievement. Third aspect, and this is the last one, Joe. Some schools are imposing and grand edifices with hyperinflated views about themselves. But I wanted this college to be very much 
at one with its environment, both ecological and human. I wanted the college community to be proud of its region. I wanted the regions and proud of that region's history and its indigenous background and the state and the country in which it lives. And I wanted the region to be proud of the college. The way in which the college was designed, put together and made and everything that it does, I wanted that to be a metaphor for being part of the community. So the metaphor also includes its colours, the way in which the buildings were constructed so they f uh, fitted into the environment. All of that became a metaphor for being part of this community. So this evolved into developing our sporting program into a local range of sports, engaging in community events, offering open events to the population and helping develop the region uh, with such as Education Harvey Bay, international ed education and so much more. From what I've seen in Red Joe, the staff, supporting community and the students have truly continued to make it so. Top regional school 2023, for goodness sake, mate, that's fantastic. <laughs> well done. Well done to everybody who did that. Now just a comment about my wife and partner, Catherine with whom I've enjoyed her love and support for over 40 years. Catherine was very much a part of this college for all the founding work she did in setting up its library and information centre, being a friend and helper to all staff, volunteering at every college fundraising event and in providing a safe and quiet learning sanctuary for those who are lonely, quiet souls or in need of some withdrawal. And Catherine is very much a part of this ceremony. For all students and adults here, my hope for you is that your life can be one filled with a rich range of activities, pursuits and experiences. We only get one shot at life, so make the best use of it and do not die wondering. My son Cameron, a couple of years ago, about two years ago, when I was trying to decide on a new car, uh, and I had a range of cars to choose from. And I said, oh, one of those is going to be a Tesla. And he said over the phone to me, Dad, Dad don't die wandering, wondering, just get it. So I did. Don't die wondering. Get out there and have a go. To experience the bitter and the sweet in life is to relish it and is to participate in it. So to the students, I say this, embrace this space, this wonderful space, make it your own and let your imaginations run wild here. There is so much in which those imaginations can be stimulated. Whether you're shooting baskets, strumming a guitar, playing a violin as I heard beautifully being played before, acting on stage or debating for all you're worth, this is your place to shine. To the staff, I say, nurture the creativity and talent that thrives within these walls. Encourage your students to extend their boundaries, to explore the unknown, and to never stop dreaming, seeking adventure, and experimenting. Here's to the future of this multi-purpose building and the countless events it will host, the memories it will create, and to the questionable acting and singing, the very curious dance moves, and the dubious sporting decisions it will witness. May it be a place of adventure, laughter, and learning, and having a go. Sweet.